Go get him, Sam. <laughs> Fall, 1964, my freshman year. And the drive from our bungalow in St. Paul to the East Bank campus took my brother, a dentistry student, and me along Summit Avenue's cathedral vault of elms to the winding sash of River Road. Deep below in the gorge, the Mississippi glittered toward the still humble skyline of Minneapolis, the Art Deco Fauché Tower, its tallest spike. No freeway yet, just this leafy translation from St. Paul's little streets to, well, where did I think we were going every morning? Surely not just to Minneapolis. From the first, the university radiated a metropolitan dream, enchanting possibility as resonant and incandescent as my entirely invented notion of New York City a place I had never seen. People warned me, you'll get lost at the U. The campus is on friendly, impersonal, pushy. Sister Mary Helen, urging a music scholarship to St. Catherine's, had said I'd lose my religion over there. <laughs> Plus, there's nowhere to eat your lunch, dear. All this sounded terrific. <laughs> I wanted to get lost in something big. I was after the big city, the big time, the big chance to be in a place ambitious about life and work. I think I was looking for trouble, something I vaguely sensed life was supposed to be about. The university did not fail me. It became, and in some ways has remained, my Manhattan. The magical city of endeavor and possibility, a parallel universe that is not, imagine, not imaginary, but where the imagination has property rights. I started as a music major, piano performance. The less said about that, the better. <laughs> Eventually, like many lost souls, I became an English major. <laughs> I left the little practice rooms in Scott Hall where kindly, discipline-driven Bernard Weiser had done his best with me and my Bach and Scarlatti. I made my way across campus to the Department of English, which in those years shared Vincent Hall with mortuary science. <laughs> Before I finally graduated in English, though, I managed to tool my way through more CLA majors than is probably legal. Anthropology, political science, a stint in Russian history, and how could I ever forget that passionate commitment for one quarter to French before my fickle heart switched to German for a one-quarter stand. It was the world I was choosing for my major and the university offered it up as only great cities and all their unruly luster can do. I worked on the student newspaper. I was given the music beat. Then Garrison Keeler hired me as associate editor of the literary magazine, The Ivory Tower. One day in Kaufman Union, I watched as an English professor I knew, but who didn't know me, ate an apple while he read a piece with my byline, my first reader. <laughs> Such moments do not fade. They accumulate and form what finally becomes an identity. I'm a writer, I thought as I watched the English professor munching his apple and reading my prose. I suppose at that moment I became myself, which is to say someone I had never known before, but have been trying to be ever since. <laughs> 